Hello and uh, welcome to this micro training video from FMCG Academy. Simply uh, pause on the screen if you want to read through this cover slide. Uh, so today we're going to talk about factors that influence product ranging or listing. So how do you get your products ranged or listed with grocery retailers? Uh, because you can actually have the best uh, advertising, the best products and the best teams and the best strategies. But if you can't get your product on the shelf as an FMCG supplier with grocery retailers, it's not going to amount to much. So let's get straight into it. The factors to range or list your products with retailers. So the first key major factor is margin. Uh, now margin essentially is the profit the retailer makes at a gross level when they sell your product on. So this is the retailer margin we are talking about. Uh, now retailer's margin and your margin unfortunately is a what we call a zero sum game. Uh, so it's a zero sum game by which I mean that uh, the more you give to the retailer, uh, the less you are going to make. Uh, so what retailers call FMCG manufacturers suppliers normally. So if the more you're going to give to the retailer, the less you're going to make. So uh, it is essentially a zero sum game and you got to make sure you keep an eye on that. And that pretty much helps retailers decide whether they wish to support you or take your products or not. The key thing in the margin game is to figure out what we call the category average margin. Uh, this is important uh, uh, because retailers don't exactly tell you, uh, because it's commercially sensitive information, they won't exactly tell you this is the category average, mar average margin and this is where you are. They'll be vocal about the fact that you are far below category average margin. Now, when, they, when the retailer talks of category average margin, it is the average margin the retailer makes from all the suppliers in that category. Um, so that is what the retailer calls category average margin. Uh, so retailers will essentially uh, raise a hue and cry when, when you're below category average margin or you're submitting products below category average margin. Say, for example, uh, if you are at, uh, if the category average margin is at 25%, now you're, most suppliers don't know this, but you can kind of guess if you've been long enough in the category and you've submitted a number of uh, new products there. And if you're going to submit products at 23% or 22%, uh, then the retailer is going to say no uh, or say no that's that's a lot below you know and they want you to try and push it up and depending on other factors it might might not get through uh, the doors and be uh, ranged on the retailer shelves but on the other hand if you come in with 27 or 28 you might have a better chance so those are some simple concepts around which uh, you just want to keep an eye on the margin and get a good understanding of category average margin from the retailer. The next key factor is product substitutability. So is your product easily substitutable? Like I'm not going to lose any shoppers as a retailer if I throw your product out of the shelf, out of out of the shelves and out of the store. Uh, then you have a bit of a problem. Uh, the, the thing is that there are varying degrees of substitutability. Uh, so some products are very substitutable, some products are less substitutable, and some products can be not at all substitutable. So the more unique the product is uh, in its offering, uh, and it has a core group of shoppers who want it, then who, who what these core group of shopper, shoppers do typically is they will change uh, what we call... Uh, uh, let me just uh, switch this off. Uh, what we call, uh, they will change supermarkets uh, if that product is not available. So you need to, so retailers need to make sure sometimes these very unique niche products are sitting there. Uh, fact of life is in number of mature categories, there are next to none, uh, next to no products which are actually f uh, with no substitutability. All of them are substitutable to some extent um especially in mature categories so it just depends where do you sit on the degree and the continuum uh, but the less substitutable you are uh, the stronger your uh, relationship or your level of engagement can be with the retailer to get your products ranged uh, the next key thing and it's a very big one is brand support so if you have essentially if you're a big if you have big market share uh, let's put this down so you've got big market share um, you have you're spending big you've got a big media spend you know whether it is television or online or social uh, so you've got a big media spend um, you've got let's say you're supporting your brands with a great innovation pipeline 
Let's put this. Um, then it's more likely that you're going to get your products ranged, you know, than someone who doesn't have all of those. Um, again, it's varying degrees, as you can see. Uh, products ranged more easily. So that's what's essentially going to happen. Um, when you come up with new products, they see you're a big player. Uh, provided, of course, you're giving acceptable margin. You know, it comes back to that number one point of margin uh, and how unique and interesting your products are. But uh, the key thing is if you've got big market share, big media spend, great innovation, then you're going to get your more, uh, more products ranged more easily. So these three factors, the first three we've talked about, uh, margin, uh, product substitutability, and brand support, are what we call the hard factors. You know, there is hard data against them, and retailers can measure you on all three uh, very clearly and simply and then can decide where you sit within that spectrum. Uh, so these are hard. The next couple are slightly softer. Uh, so category role, again, this is up for discussion and sometimes uh, there are different uh, grades in which uh, people uh, look at things. So this, this, the category role is what I call the lengths. So what lengths does the retailer view you under? So are you seen as the market leader um, uh, with, and this is very common, uh, market leader with below average margin. So remember if the category average margin is 25%, uh, half the business has got to be below 25. Uh, so, um, or a large part has to be below, or there's a fair amount of fair part which has got to be below. So that's an average, remember. So market leader with below average margin, or are you the uh, challenger brand, which everyone wants to be, because that's the more sort of uh, uh, interesting position to be in. It's the most sexy position to be in, being the challenger brand. Uh, and you've got some uh, great innovation Or are you the, uh, what we call the niche player? You know, you could be a niche player who's in a dead segment with two or three products which are just sitting there for the last 20 years and there is a certain group of shoppers that comes and buys them. Uh, so you could be in a different lens. So these are just a few examples. So retailers do tend to categorize uh, various suppliers. So the big market leader, they know this 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 supplier is below average margin. So the, the drive is always to try and push the margin up. Uh, with the challenger brand, they want to keep seeing what's the new innovation, how how much money they're spending on support, and where can we get more money from uh, in terms of uh, using them using the activations with the retailer-driven promotions, etc. With the niche players, they're saying, okay, fine, how many unique shoppers are there? Or is this a niche player who's just come into the market, gives them massive margin, say 50%, for example, and has got some funky products, is a local operation sitting just down the road. So it's a different lens. So retailer views various suppliers in different uh, with through different lenses. And it's important to understand which lens uh, you sort of sit in. Uh, so the next one after category role, uh, so you you uh, is uh, flexibility and enthusiasm. It's a pretty basic thing. Um, so look, here, here's what happens a lot of times if you're in a big global FMCG manufacturer. Uh, if every time you deal with them and they say, look, let's take part in a big retailer driven promotion week or something, and you say, I gotta get back to London, or New York, or Singapore. Um, and the retailer starts thinking, you know, maybe I should deal only with London, New York, and Singapore. I mean, you really don't have any flexibility uh, or authority levels here. Um, so that that's where some of the issues come with a lot of the global multinationals. Um, the other thing is, you know, do you sort of, uh, if you look look at, uh, you know, how 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 much do you participate in? Uh, what we call retailer driven promotions uh, promos I'll leave that as that uh, and do you help out when other suppliers out of stock see so do you sort of help when another related supplier is when another supplier is out of stock you know are you able to pump up your supply so how flexible you are and how enthusiastic are you to help and work with the retailer 
uh, keeping in mind the retailers thing. So retailers have big things. They want you to participate in National Retailer Weeks because there's money that comes into their pockets from there also. And it's you're seen as someone who's supporting the retailer um, is uh, what we call OOS, out of stock or something like that. So those are some of the, these these two are some of the, you know, what I call the softer factors, you know. So these are the soft factors. Um, and you it's, it's just having a good understanding of where you sit on the lens uh, you know, as a player, as well as how flexible and enthusiasm are you with the retailer? Uh, are you willing to work with them or you've got, look, retailers are evil and I need to, you know, basically uh, uh, not work with them. We're working against them. Uh, and I've seen account managers sometimes who work like that. Uh, the last one is basically, you know, your supply chain reliability. Look, at the end of the day, you've got the best uh, products. Uh, you've got uh, great advertising happening. Uh, but you just can't deliver the product on time for the big promotion week uh, and your supply chain is suspect, uh, your forecasting is suspect, Then, and if you do not deliver, then you're a big door. Uh, retailers will basically switch off and uh, you know deal with other suppliers then because they've got everything everything aligned. You know, you, you're, you're the challenger brand, you've got great margin, you've, got, uh, you've agreed for, with some fantastic products, you're flexible, you're enthusiastic, uh, but you just can't deliver. Your supply chain is all over the sh all over the show. So these are some of the s factors which actually affect your uh, ranging and listing with uh, grocery retailers. But just bear in mind these are all interconnected and they affect at uh, varying degrees and at different times they will affect differently. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.